Hi, I'm Jamie Brakus, and welcome to Fit and Delicious. We all know that exercise is important, but your fork and spoon are your best piece of fitness equipment. We begin with Danny's Beginner's Guide to Healthier Eating. Then join me for an amazing back stretch to relieve pain and tension. Plus, my tips for thinking lean. Next, Danny's back with a mouth-watering spinach frittata. And with all that time in the kitchen, I've got a kitchen workout to do while you wait, along with a tip from our expert, Jack LaLanne. So grab your fork and spoon, it's time to get fit. Did you know that a fork and spoon can be your best piece of fitness equipment? I'm Jamie Brinkus. Now we can sure do some major damage with these weapons of mass expansion, can't we? Apply our strategies and do them well enough that they become natural. Eating right, thinking lean, and exercising should become second nature to you. It is now your lifestyle. You own it. So let's join Danny for the beginner's guide to healthy eating. Hey guys, it's Danny, and today I am sharing tips for anybody who is beginning to eat better or wanting to work more healthy habits into their diet or into their lifestyle. For me, when I first began to stop dieting and really commit to eating better for the long term, I used clean eating as my guideline. So my definition of eating healthy and clean is simply this eating real whole unprocessed foods as close to their natural state as possible most of the time. So eating foods like vegetables, fruits, healthy sources of carbohydrates like sweet potatoes and grains, high quality sources of protein and healthy fats like avocados, nuts, and seeds. One of the most important pieces of this process is realizing that it's not about jumping on a fad diet or onto the next health craze. It's really about making a long-term commitment to a lifestyle shift for yourself. This way, you are not feeling like you are victim to mood swings and cravings that come with eating a lot of highly processed nutrient void foods. Which brings me to my very first tip. Allow yourself to be on the journey. When you are a beginner adapting new lifestyle changes and habits, you have to give yourself a little bit of space to figure it out. Don't feel like you need to do everything at once and everything at the same time. You don't need to have all your food perfectly meal prepped and you don't need to stop eating all of your favorites. This is going to be a process of learning how to do things a new way and that's gonna take a little bit of time. So if you notice your brain wanting to go to that all or nothing style of thinking, just recognize that that is diet mentality and that it doesn't work. What you want to do is give yourself a little bit of permission to slow down, create some space, and learn. Number two, healthy eating does not and is not supposed to look the same for everyone. You can be a healthy eater and be a vegan. You can be a vegetarian. You can be a meat eater. You can be a weightlifter. You can be a yogi. You can eat two times a day. You can eat six times a day. And you will also notice that your lifestyle will affect the type of healthy diet you're eating. So for example, a young student versus a working mom of two with a family versus a young professional Right? All of these people can eat healthy diets and you will see that their plates look very different based on the style of their day and the style of their life. Right, So there's no hard, fast rule here other than that simple tie-in that we are eating real whole, unprocessed foods as close to their natural state as possible most of the time and we are enjoying the food that we choose. Number three, cook as often as you can. Making your own food is one of the easiest ways to eat better because you are in charge of all of your ingredients so you know exactly what you're working with. And here's the deal, that doesn't mean that you have to cook every single thing you eat. Just try to get into the habit of cooking more than you don't. And technically, my friends, that is only 
51% of the time. Number four, focus on quality over calories. Now I have noticed for many people, definitely I've noticed this for myself, when you are focused on counting calories, you tend to get caught up in feelings of restriction and deprivation. And that is because when the brain gets to work trying to stay under or at a certain amount of calories, what it tends to do is pay attention to what it can't have or what it needs to be restricting or what it needs to be eliminating. And those thoughts, that thought process creates the feeling of deprivation. Now, if you switch your focus to quality, the brain starts looking for things that it can add into the diet. And all of a sudden, food becomes a whole new playground and it's fun and it's creative again. And so not only does it feel good, but it tastes good. Number five, what grows together goes together. When you buy foods that are in and of the same season, they automatically taste good together because Mother Nature has our Back. So in case you've never noticed, things like Brussels sprouts and grapes, butternut squash and cranberries, berries and basil, these foods all grow in the same season and they all taste amazing together, which is really good to know because it takes a lot of guesswork out of your cooking. So a great way to have a little bit of fun with this is maybe when you go to the grocery store, you pick up one to two new ingredients each week and experiment with it in your kitchen try a new method of cooking it, um, taste test a little, see if you can find some new favorites. And one last thought and good thing to keep in mind is that when ingredients are eaten in the season they grow in, they both have better flavor and a higher nutritional value. So it really truly is a win-win to eat with the seasons. Number six, have some back pocket recipes. When you are transitioning into healthy eating, it is so helpful to have a handful of recipes that you know that you like and that you can make in a reasonable amount of time. So I recommend having a few BPRs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then slowly but surely as you experiment with new things, when you have a keeper, you can add it into your back pocket. This way, when you feel like you don't have any time to think, you can always lean on this list to help you stay aligned with your goals. Number seven, learn to read your labels. Learning how to read your labels is a really easy way to recognize what's going into your body. And a great general rule of thumb to follow is to simply focus on the ingredient list, you want that list to be five ingredients or less, and you wanna make sure that each ingredient you can read, recognize, and pronounce. Hey gang, have you ever woken up with a case of those oohs and those ahs, you know, those sneaky little aches and pains in the morning? Well, I'm gonna show you some great exercises to help bring those lower back muscles relief immediately. So get off your feet and get on your seat. Let's go. Okay, the first exercise we're gonna do is what I call the hurdler stretch, okay? Your left leg is tucked here into the right and then slowly bring it down. You can grab your shins here and then pull yourself in. You know, sometimes if you have tight hamstrings, that causes lower back injury. So you gotta be careful with that one. And let's switch, other side. Gently bring it down. We're not yanking, we're just gently pulling. You know, getting fit never gets old, does it? That's what this is all about. Hold it and release. Now, we're gonna twist one leg over the other. So the left goes over the right and gently twist and torque the back right there. Boy, you can really feel that pull back here. It's a great exercise for you. And release, other side. Nice and easy, here we go. Gently pull here. You gotta keep moving, gang, right? If you rest, you rust. Don't forget that. That's what Fit and Delicious is all about. And then release. Now, bring both legs out and gently, gently bring the head towards the center. That's all it is, is right here. Now you're gonna feel that in the hamstrings back here, also releasing the lower back tension. Hold it. That's it and release. Okay, so now I'm gonna lie on the back. It's all we're gonna do is bring the knees into the chest. So gently bring the knees into the chest. You wanna hold right there. That's it. That should feel pretty good. And then release. 
This leg is here. Left leg is going to be brought back for the hamstring. Again, we like to stretch the hamstrings because certainly tight hamstrings will cause some lower back pain. You know, eight out of 10 people are afflicted with some type of back pain at some point in their lives. So it's very important to stretch it out and release. Other side, hold it right here. That's it. And you can really feel that pull through here. This will give you some benefits immediately and release. Now what I want you to do is what I call a windshield. So hips are here, you're just gonna swivel. And again, you're releasing a little bit of that lower back tension. That's it, nice and easy. Good, that's it. And release. Now, right leg is down. We're gonna cross the leg over. Nice and easy. Again, you can feel that tension relieve in the lower portion of the back. Try to keep your shoulders on the ground. That's it. And release. Other side. Slow. Hold it right there. I know you didn't catch that, but my back actually cracked right there. And release. Okay, now what I want you to do what I call a rack stretch. It's right here. Bring it all the way out. Remember to breathe. Hold, hold, hold. As high as you can go, guys. As high as you can go, right there. That's it. Good, 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 good. Now, bring the knees into the chest again. Slowly, right there. And release. Now, what I want you to do is get on all fours here. I like to do what I call the cat stretch. You're here. You're just gonna bring your back arched up and then release. Arched up, release. Again, you can feel the tension relieving that lower portion, that L4, L5 of the back. That's usually the most vulnerable area where we get most of our back pains. Again, those little oohs and those ahs. One more, hold it right there and release. Okay, so now we're gonna do what I call a Superman stretch. So, lying on your stomach, all the way. Now, what I want you to do is bring one arm up and the opposite leg up, okay? You're gonna feel that, and it's the extensors in the back, and release. Other side, hold it. Well, I'll tell you, you do this, I will guarantee, and I do these all day long, and I've gotta tell you, I don't get any lower back problems because I strength Strengthen and stretch the back and release. Again, nice and easy. Hold it right there. Keep going. And you're going to really feel that in the lower portion of your back. Feels pretty good. Getting that blood flowing to the working muscle. One more. You want to hold it. And release. Slow, slow, slow. Hey, guys. We're going to get you back in shape in no time. Well done. Our society has become overfed. We overeat on a daily basis because our food landscape has changed. The world of fast food, restaurant food, prepared food, and mammoth portions of food make it difficult to keep a calorie count within a healthy range to stay lean. You know, Jack Lane said it best. We've exceeded the feed limit. I mean, let's face it, we all have portion distortion. When it comes to getting lean, the amount of foods we eat is a key factor in controlling our weight. There's really no good or bad foods, there's just good portions. I found that you need to think lean when it comes to portions, and there's no better method than your eyes and your hands to keep portions under check. So let's get handy. You have the best measuring unit within your grasp. That's right, your hands. It's an easy portion control plan, so skip counting calories and try this method instead. To devise a lean meal every time, your palm determines your portion sizes, right? Three to four ounces, chicken, fish, turkey, lean cuts of beef and pork. Your fist determines your vegetables, cereals, and fresh fruit. Your cupped hand represents a half a cup, determines your carb portions, pasta, rice, beans, potatoes, or even ice cream. If you like snacks like chips or crackers or pretzels, two cupped hands is approximately one ounce or a single serving. Your thumb can be used for your fats, which is one tablespoon. Salad dressing, sour cream, peanut butter, cream cheese, or hard cheeses. Your thumb tip is one teaspoon. Butter, mayonnaise, or margarine. So as you can see, you're still eating your favorite foods, but now you can control the calories. So 
Example is this, if you portion three ounces of pork chop 15 times, you'll know what it looks like. You don't need to measure it, you eyeball it. It'll become second nature. Also, when in doubt, guys, eat from a smaller plate or bowl. This method is a quick solution to portion distortion. Fill your plate, enjoy your food, and never feel guilty about overeating. Think lean to become lean. Hello my friends, it's Danny, and today I'm showing you how to make a clean and delicious spinach frittata with peppers and feta cheese. This is a super simple recipe that comes together in no time, and it's perfect for breakfast, lunch, or even as a really light, fresh dinner. And I really enjoy adding frittatas to my meal prep as well, because you can eat them cold out of the fridge or room temperature, and I love knowing that I have an option in the fridge that is rich in protein and packed with veggies. So to get started, I've got my oven preheating at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So the first thing I like to do is prep all of my ingredients. And for my vegetables, I'm starting with five ounces of baby spinach. Now I always buy the baby spinach pre-washed in a container just like this. It just makes it so easy and so convenient. And then from here, I just give it a rough chop. I'm gonna end up with about four cups of chopped up baby spinach. So you could use the spinach or any other green or any other vegetable you enjoy. Really just take this recipe and use it as your blueprint using your favorite flavors or whatever you have on hand. Then I have eight ounces of these little baby bell peppers. We love keeping these in the house as a snack and I just slice them into thin rings for the frittata. So I need one cup of that and then finally a shallot which is really just a mild onion and I'm just gonna again peel that and slice it into nice thin rings. The only other filling that I'm going to use is some feta cheese. Now, whenever you're buying feta, try to buy it in block form like I have here because it's always going to be fresher and creamier because they don't need any anti-caking agents or anything when they're packing it. And then from here, you just crumble it up yourself. Always a great way to get your hands on the best feta. Then for the body of the frittata, I'm using eight whole eggs. I personally recommend buying pastured eggs whenever you can. These are not only the most nutritious eggs you can get your hands on, but they are also the most delicious. And then I'm using eight egg whites. Now I like to add the egg whites just to keep things a little bit lighter, plus it boosts up the protein in the frittata. But if you prefer, you could do all eggs, in which case you would use a dozen eggs. If you're doing the egg whites like I am, what I love to do is buy them pre-separated just like this, and then you can just measure them out. So eight egg whites would be equivalent to one cup of egg whites. Then I'm adding just a couple tablespoons of milk. You can use any type of milk you prefer. The more fat in the milk, the richer the frittata is going to be. And then a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper. Gently whisk this all together and we are ready to whip up the frittata. So over at the stove, I have a 12 inch cast iron skillet heating up over a medium low heat. I love using my cast iron skillet for the frittata because it's so durable. It's just a great pan to have on hand. It will cost you about $25 and it will last you a lifetime if you take good care of it. So I am a huge fan of the cast iron skillet. As the pan starts to heat up, I'm going to add in a tablespoon of coconut oil. Let that melt, create a nice thin coating at the bottom of the pan. And then in go my shallots and my pepper rings. I'll give that a pinch of salt and we'll gently toss that around. I'm just going to let this go for about five to seven minutes. I just like for the veggies to soften up a bit but they still have a little bit of a bite to them. So I don't necessarily want them to brown or to get too soft. Then I'm ready for my spinach. So this might look like a lot of baby spinach going into the pan, but if you've ever worked with fresh spinach before, you know how quickly it wilts down. So you're gonna see as the spinach hits the heat of the pan, it's gonna wilt down quickly and it's gonna end up looking like about a third of what we actually started with. Once you have the veggies right where you want them, right? Vibrant in color, but nice and tender, then I'm gonna give my eggs one last whisk and pour it right over the veggie mixture. Then I'm just gonna finish this with the crumbled feta cheese. Spread it all over the top so that when you are enjoying your frittata, you get a little bit with each bite. I let this go for about a minute, just till the sides set up a little bit, and then I'm gonna transfer the pan, do this very carefully, especially if you're working with cast iron because it is heavy, into my 425 degree oven, and let that cook anywhere between eight to 12 minutes. 10 tends to be the happy medium. 
Now, you may notice that once your frittata is cooked, when you pull it out of the oven, it's gonna be puffed up in the center just like mine is. It's totally fine. That's just because when you whisk the eggs, you might have gotten a bit of extra air in there, but you're gonna see as the frittata cools down that the eggs flatten back down and it's gonna look just like this. Once your frittata is cool enough to handle, you can cut it up into slices. You could do four pieces, six pieces, eight pieces. I did six today, but I will say, if you were gonna enjoy this as your meal, I find cutting it into fours is just perfect. So you could serve this on its own. You could serve it alongside a nice salad, a sweet potato, toast, really whatever turns you on. Personally, when I'm eating the frittata, I love to top it with a little bit of hot sauce just to add a little extra kick. Mm, 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 mm. It's super light and it's so fresh. You guys have got to give this one a try. It does not get any easier and or more delicious. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Danny Spees and I'll see you back here next time. Cheers. You're in the kitchen. What's that burning? Well, it's not your toast. It's those calories. Well, I got some exercises that you can work out while you wait for your coffee or your microwave. Now you can get fit and never have to leave your house. Now there's lots of ideas utilizing everyday activities and household things. All right, let's get moving. First thing we're gonna do, we need a chair. We're gonna do a push-up on the chair, okay? So you can bring it down and back up. This works your chest, your triceps, and those shoulder muscles. Also works the abs a little bit. Nice and easy. Things while you can wait for your coffee or that microwave and release. Now what I want you to do is what I call a plank. So just bring it here and just hold it right there, okay? Now you can dictate the challenge by going a little further down. This works the abs, right? A slimmer, trimmer, tighter waistline and release. Now from there, hold your chair and do a squat. Now just like you're sitting in the chair, you don't have to go too deep on this. Make sure the knees are lined up over the toes. That's it. One more and release. Okay, next guys, guess what we're gonna have? Cans of soup, okay? Or mom's tomato paste, whatever you like to do here. Now, first we're gonna do a chest press. You're gonna bring it out and back up, right there. All right, and you do about 10, 15 of those. Then you go to those biceps right here, boom. That's it, work the front of your arms. And then the back muscles, you're right here. That's it, nice and easy. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and release. Now. Shoulder press right here. Now you could do this with a book. You can do it with, again, cans of uh, uh, pasta sauce. Again, weights will do fine. And release. Now back of the arms right here, triceps. Boom, boom. That's it. Squeeze the muscle as you do it. That's it. Things you can do in the kitchen, so easy. And release. Hey, I bet you have one of these around, okay? Here we have a mop. Well, guess what? You can do lunges on the mop, it's here. Alternate. Not going too deep here, right? <laughs> what a great way to get exercise in your kitchen. That's it. One more and release. Now from here, you just do squats on these. So you're here, again. It's all you do is utilize your own kitchen appliances for your fitness. It's so simple. There's no excuses, right? That's it. And release. Now from here, I want you to do a little twist. So you're here and just twist. That's it. Now you're working that waist. A little waist management in the kitchen. That's it. Nice and easy. And release. Hey, guess what? Now we've got the laundry basket. It's right here, guys. So we want you to do again. Hopefully you have some clothes in there and you gotta, your clothes are gonna get clean and you're gonna get lean, all right? So it's all I want you to do is slowly bring it down and back up, down and back up for a squat. That's it. Now again, you don't have to go too deep on these. One more and release. We'll do lunges. You're here, alternate, one. That's it, boom. This is creating a little bit of resistance, not much, but a little. That's it, a couple more and release. Again, knees bent on this, twist. Work that waist again. See, now there's no excuses. These are everyday things you can do, everyday activities. That's it. And release. Now, chest press right here. So you want to chest press up, boom, right there. That's it, guys. Couple more. 
and then up. Shoulder press, knees bent, up, up. That's it. Couple more. And release. If you want, you can do biceps here. Up, up. Again, no excuses. You can do this. That's it. And release. Now, always end on some stretches. Stretch that shoulder out a little bit. There you go. Other side. Give me a couple nice big deep breaths all the way up. Oh, feels good. One more. Hold it up, hold it, hold it. Clasp the hands up to the ceiling. And release. You did it. Kitchen fitness. Hey, now we're going to listen to Jack LaLanne. Words of wisdom for my fitness mentor. Listen up. You know, Mother Nature's a wonderful old gal, isn't she? She has made a body, that, body that's perfect. But there's one improvement, one little thing that she could have done. So my way of thinking is anyway, you know what she should have done? She should have put right here, right where our stomach is, she should have put a window. A window where we could look in and see inside and find out what's happening. And I'm sure that most of you students who are watching me right now, listening to me, if you could see what the food that you put in your mouth does to you inside, I'm sure that there would be a lot of eating habits that would be changed very rapidly. That is the truth. Now, for example, look at this. See this donut? I'm not up here giving you a lecture on how bad donuts are or anything like that, but I'm just talking about donuts. So you bite in this thing. Personally, I wouldn't take a bite out of this with my worst enemy's teeth, you know, but uh, the only thing good about a donut, I've always said, is the hope. If the fork and spoon are your best piece of fitness equipment, it's your brain that can sabotage you. Learn how to eliminate stinking thinking next time on Fit and Delicious. For videos, tips, and the eight day challenge, visit fitanddelicious.com. To become a Fit and Delicious member, where you'll find over 90 videos, tips, and inspiration, Plus all 13 episodes of Fit and Delicious, go to fitanddelicious.com. This is episode 108.